And lastly, with traditional publishing, we didn't have the aid of computer graphics to help us or software or computers in general to assist us in the organization of files. And so in traditional publishing, you had to create everything manually. And maybe the example that I have on the slide isn't the best example, but you literally had to create mock-ups or paste-ups of what you were working on. And you would literally kind of paste things together and, and you would rub letters out from a lettering sheet and you would create everything manually. So you have a physical copy of whatever you're trying to print. And then you would have to organize that in whatever way that you would organize that and get it to the printer. You could mail it, you could ship it, you could drop it off yourself if you wanted to. But you had to physically take whatever you wanted printed to the printer. If you wanted photographs, you had to have a folder that had all your photographs in it that says this one goes on page 6 and this one goes on page 9 and this one goes on page 12. And then the printer would use traditional film to photograph what you wanted to create. They would photograph your they would insert your photographs when they're creating the printing plates and are creating the, the film for, for making printing plates. And it was a whole manual process. We didn't have programs like Adobe InDesign or Quark Express um, that would kind of bridge the gap between the designer and the printer. It was, it was on the, the designer's back to make sure that every single thing that you needed to, to reproduce your project was included in this physical package that you would send to the printer. The second type of publishing that you should be aware of is electronic publishing. And basically it is traditional publishing, but now we can use computers. And so the ideal is still the same. We're going to prepare artwork in preparation for a printed output. And we're going to print books or posters or whatever it happens to be that you want to print. But now we have computers that we can use. And when we started using computers, we had benefits that were associated with those computers. So there, there are some drawbacks as well in the early days where the, the quality of the artwork that you can create on a computer was not up to par with the quality of artwork you could create by hand. But now we had programs like Photoshop or an Illustrator, Freehand is what was, existed um, way back in the day. And you could use these to create artwork. Or you could still create all of your artwork by hand, but then you could scan it into the computer and you could use page layout software applications to lay out your design for a book or a poster or whatever you're trying to make. And so one of the earliest forms of organization came in the form of using something called PageMaker. And PageMaker was one of the very first ways that you could lay out a job for printing electronically. So some of the benefits of electronic publishing as opposed to traditional publishing, which didn't have computers, are that we have those Adobe uh, graphic arts programs. And today we use Adobe InDesign, but I'll show you in a couple slides. There are different options that have been available over the years. The electronic publishing computer aspect allowed you the ability to save work. Um, as you're working on it, you can just hit save periodically. You could save copies if you wanted to. You could duplicate your files. So you can test multiple variations. And so instead of coming up with one design, maybe you would come up with three completely different designs for the same book. And so I just grabbed these three images because they're kind of the same shape. But you could have, let's say these are book covers, three completely different designs in a relatively short amount of time to show your client. Um, where you didn't have to you know, create everything by hand and hand draw it or you didn't have to scan it and assemble it together manually. You could create it electronically, show them to your client and say, well, what about these three different concepts? Which one do you feel is working best or which one kind of meets the needs of, of what you were looking for? And then if they tell you they really like this one on the right hand side, then you can kind of go down that path. But having the electronic um, ability to save copies or to duplicate your files helped a lot with um, creating variations of things. Um, in addition, this is my opinion that this is the most important reason that electronic publishing is awesome, is that the programs that we would use for page layout design, like InDesign, uh, they'll organize for you. As long as you have good input, as long as you're putting in good information to the program, you can hit a button and it will organize for you. And in InDesign, we call it packaging. If you're using something called Quark Express, it was called Collect for Output. But it did the same thing that you would do manually in traditional publishing by collecting all of the things or the assets you need to recreate a project, putting them in a big folder, and then sending them to the printer. Well, now we can create an electronic folder. And in InDesign, that's called a package. And then editing was really quick, too. 
And so if you were looking at these designs here and a client really liked one of them, but they asked if you could change the color of the background or you could edit the text, or maybe they really liked this red one on the right hand side, but they didn't like where this little subtext here was and they wanted it moved up here. Really easily in software layout applications, you can just grab a text box and move it and place it in the new positioning. But in traditional publishing, you couldn't do that. You had to redo all the work that it created to make those things. The third type of publishing that you should be aware of is called e-publishing. And so I made this slide a long time ago and I've described it as a very common buzzword used to describe designs prepared for a digital publication as opposed to a traditional printed items. The intended output is digital. Um, it's not really a buzzword anymore. It's here. It's present. It is what we are doing. And InDesign is fantastic for creating both um, electronic publishing and e-publishing, right? We're creating electronic documents for printed outputs, but in InDesign you can actually create a slew of digital outputs. And so if you were designing something with the intention of it being on a CD-ROM, which was like kind of, kind of the earliest form of digital or e-publishing, um, an e-book for the Kindle or the iPad, etc., online newspapers and magazines, and the intended output is digital, um, you would be preparing something for e-publishing. And the reason that we differentiate these is because they have different requirements. There are certain things I'm going to do to a file if it's intended to be printed versus if it's intended to be viewed on the iPad. For example, the size, right? If I'm going to print a book, I might make it 8.5 by 11, and I would use printing settings like 300 resolution and CMYK color modes. But if I'm preparing artwork for e-publishing, I'm going to use the iPad screen, right? 1024 by 768 pixels. Instead of talking about it in terms of resolution, I'm going to talk about it in terms of pixels. And I'm going to use RGB color mode because it's a display device. And I'm going to make decisions based on that intended output. The third type, or sorry, the fourth type and the final type of publishing that I'd like you to start differentiating is web publishing and is the process of publishing materials to the internet. The key difference between web publishing and e-publishing is the need for internet access. I don't necessarily need the internet to view an e-book, but I do need it to view a website because it's constantly changing. I could open a website and disconnect my computer from the internet and still look at the website but I wouldn't be able to interact with it and click on it because then links would be broken because I don't have access to the internet. Um, and if I'm looking at something that updates like this Yahoo website over here that has news on it, if I want to see the most current news, I need to have internet. And so we say that e-publishing is intended for digital outputs, but you could kind of download it and then you don't need necessarily to have the internet attached to it. And web publishing is publishing things that would require internet access. They're going to have similar needs and similar setups when you're creating your files. Um, but if you're needing the internet for whatever reason, it would be web publishing.